Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome back to Chat on Mix. So today I'm going to talk about three major challenges in bioinformatics for biotech according to my last two years experience in my current company. So today is the last day of 2023 and I want to make this 50th video for uh, the Chat on Mix, the YouTube channel. And I want to thank you again for your support. And the first challenge is there's still need, great need for an improved infrastructure for routine data pre-processing. Genomics data are usually uh, large in size and you cannot handle them uh, on, your, on your desktop. So it's very common to use like, cloud computing, for example, Google Cloud, AWS, even Azure. However, to use those services, there are actually a lot of administrative uh, work that, is, that are involved. For example, you have to set up uh, an organization on, on platform and set up the security and even just decide what type of machine you need to spin up and how big the memory you need to use and how big the disk size you need and how do you actually attach the disk size in, uh, to those uh, virtual computing machines requires a lot of actually uh, work. And we have to read the, the uh, documentations, and, uh, and you, unless you have a, a big team of IT department that can handle that, usually the bioinformatics team has to set up. So it's still uh, a lot of work to do. Uh, for for uh, genomics data, uh, common uh, data type, for example, uh, bulk RNA sequencing, single cell RNA sequencing. Uh, whole exon, whole genome sequencing, and even uh, single cell attack sequencing, you, you need a, a, a workflow to pre process all data from FASTQ files to a format that is ready for downstream analysis. For example, for single cell RNA sequencing, um, the raw data will be the FASTQ files, and the files that are ready for downstream analysis will be a, just a count matrix with the rows of genes, columns of cells. So, there are workflow languages such as a, a common workflow language CWL, a widow from Broad, uh, SnakeMake, the Python extension, or Nextflow, which is gaining a lot of popularity recently, that are designed just for that uh, specific task. However, for each um, uh, data type, there is a, you have to actually write a, a customized workflow for each data type, and it can also require some work for you to do that. And there are actually bioinformatics platforms such as those uh, really established ones, DNA Nexus, Seven Bridges, and Code Ocean. And, and the new ones such as Watershed, Latch Bio, Deep Origin, and even bigger, they are trying to solve this problem for the uh, for bioinformatics team in, in biotech. So they're trying to make our job a little bit easier so you can easily uh, spin up the machine easily and select them. Uh, the type of ma uh, machine uh, easily without worrying about all the security and uh, all the stuff uh, behind the scenes. And uh, data organization is uh, also a big problem. Uh, for example, if you are generating a lot of high uh, data from your high throughput uh, uh, assay or screening assay, how do you organize the data uh, in the uh, in the cloud? What what kind of data uh, structure? Data folder, uh, data folder structure is that, and how do you efficiently track the metadata? So eventually, when you get the data to your bioinformatics team, how they can actually analyze them uh, efficiently. And challenge number two is the uh, importance of harmonizing public data for more efficient analysis. So. Public data is a it's a gold mine. Uh, there are so much data in uh, repositories such as G GEO, uh, ENA, and there are other actual large-scale consortium uh, projects such as the Cancer Genome Atlas, TCGA, CCLE, even single cell, uh, human cell atlas. And how can you actually use those data efficiently, right? The problem is that usually the metadata are very messy and it takes time to clean them up. And in, in our experience, like it took uh, it took us like two to three weeks uh, for a t for for a member full time to 
harmonize five data sets. Like those are like five immunotherapy related single cell RNA sequencing data sets. And it requires us to go back to the literature, read the paper to understand the experimental design and uh, understand uh, uh, the, uh, the metadata like by even just downloading the spreadsheet from the supplementary files and also con uh, harmonize them consistently uh, in a way, okay, the same column means the same thing. Uh, it just requires a lot of extra manpower. In a company such as Unity Data, they are using large language models to curate metadata and they claim it uh, can speed up their workflow uh, up to like 70%. And it still requires actually a human to uh, verify those metadata and even correct them actually manually. But it's a great progress. Challenge number three is the challenge to collaborate with each other. So nowadays, it's never a one-man show anymore. It always requires the collaboration between different teams, the, the computational team and the web biology team. They need to work really closely with each other. And the bioinformaticians, they really need to speak the same language as biologists. Actually, I really encourage uh, the bioinformaticians uh, talk with the uh, web biologists before they even carry out the experiments. For example, to understand okay how how many samples are needed for the power for, for the power, and how to design experiments without uh, introducing batch effect. Uh, so really, the bioinformaticians need to. Uh, communicate with the web biologists uh, in really early stage. And that's actually one of my strengths because I was trained in the web lab uh, during my PhD, so I, and I can learn computation later so I can speak both language and I can function as, a, uh, as, a, as, a, as the people, as the man who uh, intermediate between the, those two teams. And also the fast turnover analysis requires efficient communication between the two teams as well, because the uh, web biology team can give feedback uh, really fast, so to guide your analysis. And then once you have some uh, analysis, you can uh, also show it to uh, to the web lab, web lab team, and they can give you a lot of uh, feedback. So it really requires a really efficient communication between those two teams at. Immunitas, our company, the web biologists and the computational biologists, they, they actually sit in, uh, uh, next to each other and we, we can usually just talk to each other uh, by, uh, by going to their desks. Uh, so it really requires uh, education uh, between uh, those two parties. So the uh, web biologists need to appreciate how sometimes how challenging it is to analyze the data and the computational team may need to appreciate how hard it is to generate clean and high quality data. So uh, need education uh, for both parties. Okay, that's it for today. I uh, hope you like it. Click subscribe if you like this content and uh, thank you, have happy learning. And I wish you a prosperous uh, 2024.